Hi there, thank you for watching the News Bunker. I'm Andy Waits. It's Thursday, February 5th, 2009. Last summer, we were paying over four bucks for gas. In December, the Bush administration auctioned 77 parcels of land in Utah for oil and gas exploration. Some of those tracks were within miles of national parks. Now, the incoming Interior Secretary, Ken Salazar, has canceled those leases. Remember that when you're filling the tank this summer. You've probably heard about California's budget issues. The state controller, who's responsible for watching the budget, says the state will be $346 million in the hole by the end of February. So he's delaying tax refunds and other bills by 30 days, hoping something will happen. During that time, his office will be renovated and get $2 million worth of new furniture. Oh! I think we just found the problem. A high school substitute teacher in Vineland, New Jersey faced a disciplinary board today, her infraction requiring her students to speak English. She had the class sign a contract that said no other language would be tolerated. Someone told the ACLU the school board was mortified, saying the teacher's policy would not be tolerated. Well, in this meeting, she may well have spoken some English that wouldn't be appropriate for the classroom. The revolution has been postponed. The digital TV revolution, that is. All analog TV transmission was supposed to cease February 17th. But now, Congress has sent the president a bill delaying the switch to June 12th. Americans should be prepared for millions to not be prepared then. One of the most enduring images of the Barack Obama inauguration is Aretha Franklin's hat. The milliner who designed it has had so many orders from vendors, he's run out of fabric. Soon there will be 20 similar designs in a variety of spring colors, $150 to $200 each. Now that's change we can hope for, or something. Now a look at newspapers from around the world and across America. First, the New York Times. This is a Nazi doctor who escaped Germany, lived in Egypt until he died in 1992. I'm sure he has a nice, warm place in hell now. Hmm, U.S. facing loss of key Asia base. The president of Kyrgyzstan apparently is kicking the U.S. Air Force out. That's a vital supply line for our troops in Afghanistan. You know, we should send Borat to negotiate that. Over here, a list of the president's demands from companies taking bailouts. You got your $500,000 salary, very low for a top CEO. The fourth one down there, no golden parachutes for the top 10 executives. Now, do we really want executives who aren't able to negotiate better terms somewhere else, running financial institutions already in trouble? Let's look at the LA Times. Traffic report for an Afghanistan dirt road. Gonna be delays heading into the mountains today. Oh, look at this. Obama puts the heat on Republicans. He says the half steps now urged by the GOP for the stimulus bill are the same ideas that led to the financial crisis. Right, so what we need to do is nationalize the financial institutions with an eye to internationalizing them and control how much executives make. There's a good first step, and thus begins the revolution. Well, let's look to the heartland. Here's the Quad City Times in Iowa. The story dominating the front page, farming of course, the number of farms isn't shrinking anymore. It's just that they're either gigantic or boutique. The middle-sized farmer is increasingly being squeezed out. Apparently, there's only so much need for radicchio and truffles. If you watch shows like CSI or Numbers, you would think that forensics techniques make it all but certain criminals will pay. The truth is, not so much. A scathing report is about to hit the streets from the National Academy of Sciences. It will critique typical police methods of fingerprinting, firearms identification, and analysis of bite marks, blood splatter, hair, and handwriting. The problem? poorly trained technicians who make inaccurate analysis and then exaggerate the validity of their findings. The report doesn't talk about legal ramifications, just about changes that would make forensics a more reliable science. But you can bet it will be cited in a truckload of court appeals. Well, soon we'll guess we're going to hear that DNA stands for do not allow. Now some comments on your comments. Sons the One writes, Obama's new cabinet nominees appear to be criminals. What about Joe the Plumber? What a media stink about his measly $2,000 tax bill. Geithner failed to pay $42,000 in self-employment taxes. After he was considered as a cabinet selection, Geithner only paid back taxes for the tax years covered by the statute of limitations. Well, apparently, you don't understand how the revolution works. Karl Marx wrote about the dictatorship of the proletariat in the Communist Manifesto. I believe we're seeing seismic shifts from a Keynesian to a Marxist economy. Now, what that means is less for you, more for your comrades. If it all seems a little too complicated, here's a book I recommend, The Little Red Hen. Really, check it out. Got mine right here. It's good stuff.
And finally, the Pearl of Wisdom. Adlai Stevenson was born on this date in 1900. He served as a UN ambassador, and he was the Democratic candidate for president in 1952 and again in 1956. His slogan, we need Adlai badly. He was hailed by liberals as a man of immense intellect. On the right, though, he was thought to be a nice guy, but naive. Adlai Stevenson said, the time to stop a revolution is at the beginning, not the end. Well, that's it from the News Bunker. There's more news tomorrow. Emmanuel Goldstein sends his regards. Thank you for your comments. They're always interesting, even when I disagree. Maybe especially if I disagree. Clicking on the yellow subscribe button may be your way of sticking it to the man. Check back in Monday through Friday for more reports from the News Bunker. I'm Andy Waits. Hey, thank you for watching.